Welcome soil conservation and management students to our video lecture series on soil resilience. These lectures are designed for students at the Royal University of Agriculture in Phnom Penh, Cambodia. And I am Dr. Jared D. Williams from Brigham Young University, Idaho in the United States of America. This is video lecture number four from our lecture series on soil resilience that correlates with session 13 of the soil, man soil conservation management course at Royal University of Agriculture. In this, in this set, uh, video lecture, we're going to talk about soil processes and resilience. In the previous lecture, we talked about soil resilient factors and how the five soil forming factors uh, influence soil uh, resilience with the exception of time. We're going to talk about time as, a, as part of our soil forming factor here in this video lecture right now. So the way to think about time in, and soil resilience is probably best visualized by this graph. So we have time here on our x-axis, soil recovery here on our y-axis, okay. y and our x, and it's called a sigmoid curve. We use the term sigmoid to describe the shape, okay, the shape of this of this curve, the, the blue, okay, shape. And so if you'll notice, at first we have what we call exponential exponential recovery okay or and then we have linear recovery and then slowed recovery slowed recovery okay and that's the same as we think about resilience okay the soil uh, will have this initial rapid resistance or recovery Okay. And then it will have uh, it will have uh, this linear and, and then a very fast rate of recovery. And we'll we'll see that in some data that we'll show you later. Uh, but the way to think about it is our soil properties and our soil will 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 uh, its resilience will allow for a, a rapid response, then kind of a slow response. But really, the key here is to finally get up here to where we are significantly similar, so maybe up in this area right here, you know, this could take hundreds, hundreds of years, hundreds of years, uh, but we can get back to maybe a 50% recovery stage in, in much less. And to get back to maybe back to the normal stage, that could be thousands of years. And that's why earlier in discussion, we said that soil resilience uh, really is to get back to a similar stage. Okay, because we can't get all the way back. Uh, it's just not possible. Okay. Just time-wise, it's just too much time. Now, let's move in and talk about our, our processes, our soil-forming processes. And uh, as far as soil-forming pro processes, there are, are uh, four major soil-forming processes. And let me grab those, a highlighter, and we highlight those. So we have soil additions. Okay, soil additions, we have removals, being removed, okay, and we have transformations, okay, transformations, and then translocations, okay, and so um, the way to think about this is additions can be organic matter, it can be mineral, removal is going to be decomposition of organic materials and, 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 and uh, volatilization into the atmosphere, it could be erosion, okay, it could be removals. Uh, re erosion can also be a translocation, translocation meaning we're moving it from one part to the next. Typically when we talk about translocation, we're talking about moving something that's up here to down in the profile, and transformations are chemical. Think about chemical conversions, okay. Uh, oxidation reduction reactions and uh, solubilization and these kinds of things are our transformations but here is the key is 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 this what we see over here okay rate of soil formation is key if these additions 
let me change my color. If these additions are greater than, right, greater than removals, then we are, then the soil has high resilience. Okay, that would be resilient, highly resilient, because we're being able to create soil at a faster pace than we're removing the soil. But if we flip this and we have less additions, okay, and more removal, I should I forgot to write high here, then we're going to have low resilience. And that's that makes sense, right? Because we're losing the soil faster than we're than we're gaining soil. Okay? And and, tr and translocations can, can influence that, transformations can influence that. But again, uh, overall <clears throat> We want deep soils, remember, we want deep soils, not shallow, but deep soils, and we want uh, soil, form soil formation additions to be similar to removals or greater than removals. That makes a soil more resilient, able to bounce back from disturbance, tillage, deforestation, what, whichever uh, disturbance we have. Okay. Now, uh, these, these factors, are, of course, are influenced by physical, chemical, and biological processes. And we have a, a list. Let me get my picture out of the way. We have a list of these. Okay, So here's our physical properties. And, and we'll do physical properties maybe here in green. Uh, so here's our physical properties. So things like weathering, right? That makes sense. As, as, as crystals, minerals, right, weathers, right, it, be, it, it creates more soil. Soil, water, air, and heat fluxes, and we talked about this one previously, right? When we have water, we have good air exchange, and we have some temp, some heat, that increases the rate of both uh, chemical and biological reactions that tend to help increase uh, soil formation, and therefore increase soil resilience to disturbances. Aggregate stability, we know. Stable aggregates reduce erosion, promote better soil organic matter. Again, develop environments that soils are more resilient, can bounce back from disturbances. We also have flocculation, shrink and swell clays, and, and then clay formation all play a role too. Okay, next let's do chemical processes. And again, we have weathering up there, right? Hydrolysis, oxidation, mentioned those previously. Well, these that, that form soils, right? That, that, they're helping to weather minerals into small particles, clays, and silts and sands that then uh, can fill the soil. We have some nutrient transformation processes here, right? These are all nutrient transformations. So nutrient cycling is listed here, but right, that helps to convert nutrients into plant available or microbial available forms that increase nutrient uptake and therefore more organic matter help build soils. And we see that here, right? These things eventually are going to uh, result in more se carbon sequestration, more organic matter in the soil as well. Our final one over here, change to a blue color, oh, we can't do blue, purple, is biological activities, okay? Again, biopedoturbation. That's biological weathering. Microbes and, and, and other soil organisms breaking down materials and forming new soil. And remember, resilience is going to be tied back to soil formation. Soils that can build, so can, can add, create additional soil more rapidly than is lost is, are likely to be more resilient, be able to recover from disturbances, okay? Uh, growth of roots, right? Activity of macro and microorganisms, as these, if they're more rapid, they're going to create more soil organic matter for us, okay? Again, these processes are important to us because if we can, if these physical, chemical, and biological processes are rapid, they, they will form new soil quickly and allow the soil to be able to recover, bounce back from disturbance like tillage, deforestation, more rapidly. If these processes are slow to form new soil, then the soils are less resilient, will need intervention, will need 
additional management if they are to be able to recover from disturbance and degradation. In other words, they're more susceptible to soil degradation because they don't have resiliency. They don't have the ability to bounce back. That concludes this lecture number four, which is part of our session 13 lecture series for the uh, Royal University of Agriculture students.